this is the one branch where there's one person at the top as opposed to Congress or the judiciary. And I think things we really want is all comes out of what does a president do? You're watching Restoring America, where we shine a light on the fundamental values of this country in all the reasons why they're worth saving. This week, we're going to preview the upcoming presidential election by asking a critical but often overlooked question. What makes a good president? I'm Kaylee McGee White, and this is Restoring America. This November, voters will have to choose between former President Donald Trump or Vice President Kamala Harris. The policies of the two candidates, and the two parties for that matter, could not be more different. And that's at least in part because Trump and Harris have very different ideas about what the job of the president is, what role the executive branch ought to play in our government, and whether the president must adhere to the checks on his power as laid out in our Constitution. These are vitally important questions, especially after four years of an administration that has expanded the bounds of its authority on everything from student loan debt forgiveness to electric vehicle mandates to a Title IX rewrite that erases our traditional definition of biological sex. Kamala Harris will undoubtedly continue this trend, while Trump, though he does not exactly oppose big government, has at least offered a plan to take power back from unelected bureaucrats who undermine the efficiency and authority of the executive branch. Voters must choose between these visions. Our constitutional model of government is at stake, as my guest today will explain. But before we get to him, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and for more, head to WashingtonExaminer.com. With me today is Dr. Adam Carrington, an associate professor at Ashland University and a contributor for the Washington Examiner. He's also a former professor of mine at Hillsdale College. Dr. Carrington, thanks so much for being with us today. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. Glad to be here with you, thanks. Well, looking ahead to the 2024 election this November, a lot of the focus has been spent on the differences in policy between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. But what about the differences in their characteristics? Should voters be concerned about those as well? And if so, which characteristics should voters be looking for in a president? Certainly, and more than other branches, this is the one branch where there's one person at the top as opposed to Congress or the judiciary. And I think things we really want is, all comes out of what does a president do? A president is tasked by the constitution with protecting the American people, either from military threats or from crime by enforcing the laws. So what do you need to do that? And I think it's really, are they wise in how they apply the law? Are they energetic in vigorously enforcing the law? Do they have a public servant's disposition? Are they really working for the American people for their good through obeying the Constitution? And then the last thing that I think has become more important in the modern age are they good at communicating how they're protecting the American people, how they understand the Constitution, so that the American people know whether their interests are being served? And touching on policy a little bit, it's obvious that neither Harris nor Trump are exactly limited government candidates. However, Kamala Harris seems poised to drastically expand the size and role of the presidency versus someone like Donald Trump, because that's exactly what her, the current administration has done under Joe Biden. Uh, what, are the, what are the concerns about that, and should voters be worried about this? Yeah, I, I think the bigger worry, even though a too powerful presidency is a concern, uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis Congress, which has been so weakened in the modern era, is actually the president trying to build up the administrative state, the agencies that are supposed to be under the president, but really operate independently. And why are those even more dangerous? I think it's because one, we have a government of, by, and for the people. Who rules really matters. And we can hold a president accountable, but these agencies that seem to be unelected, go on and on and, and, and really do things without the consent of the governed is a problem. The other is the presidency is one institution in our separation of powers. There's ways the judiciary can check it. There's ways Congress can check it. The administrative state really brings together all three powers in an unaccountable way. 
And if we want to continue to have a government that is by the people, and if we want to have a government that continues to operate according to our constitutional mechanisms, sure, we shouldn't have a president that's too powerful. And I think the Harris administration, if it existed, would want that. But we also don't want them empowering bureaucrats to be um, sort of a fourth branch of government that takes away from the vitality of the people's rule and all the other branches as well. So let's say Trump wins in November. Are there concrete steps he might be able to take to rein back the administrative state and to take back some of that power from unelected bureaucrats? I think his judicial nominees have already done some of that work. But I think a presidency could, as he has uh, proposed, limit how many people are protected from political hirings and firings. I don't th think that needs to be done with every bureaucrat, but make more of them politically accountable, especially those who are making real policy decisions that should be following the will of the people. And I think really putting some political capital on the line to reforming some of these agencies like the EPA or how uh, the, you know, uh, the um, Health and Human Services, not so much in the policies they're doing, but are they structured in a way where they're politically accountable and where they're merely carrying out the law? Congress is writing the law, the judiciary is doing the adjudication of the law. So can he put legislation and there's some potential bills out there that would help with this to actually uh, put some money on the line, so to speak, to, to, to make these kind of reforms happen, which by the way, would free up his presidency to be more effective in the policies he wants to enact. And looking past the 2024 election, how can we move closer to the founders' vision of the presidency? We know that we're going to have plenty of presidential candidates besides Donald Trump and Kamala Harris in the future. So what can we as voters be doing to select better candidates across the board? I think it starts with being more familiar with our founding principles, the Declaration of Independence and the purpose of government and the Constitution and the structure of government, but then holding candidates accountable for, do they actually understand the presidency well? We often just debate, do we like their immigration policy or abortion or taxes? And, and those still matter a lot, but do they actually understand what the presidency should do toward accomplishing good ends? And are they willing to one, stay in their lane, enforcing the laws, applying them as an executive, and two, are they willing to protect the presidency against bureaucrats or other branches when they want to push on that? Uh, do we really want, are we will, really willing to put our votes on the line for those kinds of matters, not merely our policy outcomes? And I think if we're willing to put our, our vote on the line for how the president acts, it will actually enhance the frust getting Americans to actually have policy outcomes that they want. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure, as I said before. And for more breaking news, exclusive interviews, and conservative views, be sure to check out WashingtonExaminer.com.